How's 10.30? Yeah. All alive? Yeah. Quick poll, anybody from Brackies? Yeah. What took you so long? <laughs> Any from, anybody from Benoni? Yeah. Representing, it takes a while to come from Benoni, that's why you went at the 8.30, because it's... Anybody from Germiston? Yeah. Sure, yes. Loud and proud. Anybody from Boxburg? <laughs> there we are. All right. Good morning. 10.30's come to play today. We're going to do the things. Good to be together, isn't it? Um, before we go any further, Mandela Day, um, hi and thank you. You've got yourself a new job. It'll be the responding to all the emails that come to Byron at Thrive Church. Um, we set ourselves a goal of 100 pints, which would save 300 lives because it's three lives for every one pint. And um, as Heinz said, we smashed that target yesterday. 157 pints. Come on. Isn't that good? So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you bled for the cause, thank you so, so much. And if they denied you, you came and they wouldn't take your blood because of your dwellums, <laughs> your dodgy lifestyle, there's always next time. <laughs> Clean up your act and come next time. And <laughs> Anybody ever seen everybody? I want to start this morning. I want to start this morning by giving you, uh, I think, one of the greatest gifts. And maybe, maybe this, what I'm about to give you today, is maybe the first moment this week that this would have happened for you. I want to give us the gift of just a moment's silence. You know how important silence is for our souls? I think it's Pastor Trevor Hudson, he says that the human soul is shy. Our souls are shy. And sometimes they only come out when things are silent. You know? And so today, I just want to invite you, where you are, just to have a moment to connect with God about your week. Just maybe tell him how things went for you. Tell him what you're disappointed with. I had one of my worst weeks thinking-wise, mentally-wise. Um, really struggled with my thinking. And maybe it's because we're starting a series on the Holy Spirit and we're going to talk about that stuff. Sometimes the <clears throat> person who preaches the stuff gets tested in the stuff, you know? Um, so if you're like me and you had a bad thinking week, maybe you just want to give that to him. And just... Maybe there's some victories, celebrations. Maybe there, as Heinz led us so well today, and there's some moments of gratitude. Can I invite you just to take a moment? Maybe this is the first time. Maybe you've got small kids, and this is the first time you've had a moment of silence this whole week. Well, it's our gift to you. <laughs> Costs nothing, and here we go. So there we are. Take a moment. Lord, we just thank you that we can approach you. We can uh, come into your presence. Lord, thank you that we can take just a moment to settle ourselves, quiet ourselves, let our souls <clears throat> emerge a little bit, and we pray that today you'd have your hand upon the word. May our hearts and our minds be receptive, and we, would you speak to us, Lord, in a powerful and wonderful way? Would you speak to us today, in Jesus' name? And everybody said, Amen. 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 Well, this morning we kick off a brand new series. It's called Life with the Holy Spirit. It's a four part series. And we've titled it Life with the Holy Spirit. Don't know about you, but yo, I'm feeling this. I'm not sure I can do life 
in the 21st century, in Joburg, with Eskom, <laughs> or without Eskom, should we say, <laughs> by myself. Yeah. And the Spirit of God is the answer to so many of our questions. It's a four-part series. I genuinely believe this series is going to shift and shape our thinking, nourish our souls, lift our spirits, and build our faith. So I want to encourage you not only to invite family and friends, but to, to really, really settle yourself in for four weeks. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful series. Let me start by asking you a question. When you were growing up, did you have things that fascinated you? I'll give you an example of the things that I'm talking about. When I was growing up, my brother will attest to this, I think we all had the same obsession. We loved cars with electric windows. Anybody like that? Like, remember when the, they, they would make cars with electric windows in the front, but then they had roll-up windows in the back? Anybody ever had that? And, and all we wanted was for my dad to buy a car with electric windows. We would go looking on Sunday afternoons at second-hand car lots, and the only criteria was, well, is there an electric window in this car? Ever have those like weird childhood kind of things? The other thing that always fascinated me and that we always wanted, and sadly we never, we never, never had this, was double story houses. I've always loved a double story house. There's just something about it. So I would, uh, we had family friends who had a double story house. One of my best friends had a double story house. Anytime I went to the house, I would take the opportunity to go up to the second level and just stare out the window. <laughs> When Pastor Ken and I, we, we stayed in our first place, which was a little flat, and then we were able to build our own place. When I built that thing, guess what I designed? <laughs> double story, <laughs> definitely. And, and the thing about double story houses is that life just looks different from the second floor, doesn't it? So I would go up to my friend's place and I'd stare through the round window. I'll never forget he had a round window and I would look through it. And, and you, you see so much more than when you're on the bottom level. I think our faith, friends, is a little bit like that. There are two stories to our faith. The bottom story is belief. The top story is experience. And if you're anything like me, sometimes I live so much of my life in the belief level. And today what I wanna do is hopefully give us, I wanna offer us a staircase to the second level which is experience, which is power, which is a sense of God's glory, a sense of God's abiding that you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't, at the end of this four week series, you wouldn't simply know Him or even know about Him, but that you would experience Him, that you would learn how you can experience Him, that your faith wouldn't be druch, but that you'd get to the second level. So today I wanna take us on a journey upstairs and I wanna offer us a staircase. And that staircase is the Holy Spirit. Caveat, warning, whatever you want to, parental alert, whatever you want to call it. Today is teach more than preach. Today is content rich. I want to try and download quite a lot to you. I say that to you, to give it to you up front. I want to encourage you to take notes. I want to encourage you to be good recipients of knowledge and wisdom. I want to encourage you to steward the word well. I want to encourage you to take out your phone and take pictures of the text or take notes yourselves. Um, when we receive the word well, God's more likely to speak to us in, in more compelling ways. And if we take notes, if we grab a hold of it, we'll retain eight times more than simply if we sit and listen. So uh, I really do believe that God works in our lives when we are stewards of what it is. So today's teaching, is that okay? I know it's 10, 30 something on a Sunday morning and I need to know if you're okay. We've got a deal. The better you respond, the better I will teach. Probably the shorter I'll teach. But if you get really vult, probably the longer I'll teach. Okay, so just keep us on here. <laughs> okay, you ready to go? The Holy Spirit, who is He? Third person of the Trinity. Uh, I think sometimes the Holy Spirit gets a bad rap. Uh, I think we sometimes think of him as the spare wheel. Did you ever go on a date with your friend and his girlfriend? Or with your friend and her boyfriend? And you were the spare wheel, the third one. I, went, I did that once. I went to movies with my friend and his girlfriend. I did that once and I only ever did that once. I'll never do that again. They would go to movies and we're busy, they're busy holding hands and then we get into the movies and then they're lying on each other's shoulders and, uh, and I'm like, no. Uh. 
Sometimes we treat the Holy Spirit like he's the third wheel. Father, Son, oh, and it's the Holy Spirit. But he's third person of the Trinity, co-equal with the Father, the Son, and the... The Holy Spirit is a person. God, the Spirit. Think of God as water. He can come in solid form ice, can come in gaseous form steam, or he can come in liquid form water. Same, same um, thing, just different form. Holy Spirit is, the, is God the Spirit. Today, let me give you an overview. I want to kind of give you, uh, I want to build the profile of the Holy Spirit for you so you know who he is and what he does. Is that okay? Number one, the Holy Spirit is a teacher. He, his job is to teach and remind. If you're taking notes, write the words teach and remind. John 14, 26, Jesus told his disciples, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. He's our teacher, are you with me? And he will bring to remembrance all that I've said to you. So he teaches and he reminds. How does he teach us? Predominantly through scripture. When you open the pages of your Bible and a verse jumps out at you, or you get a thought about that scripture that you never imagined before. I had it just two weeks ago with Psalm 90 verse 17. It says, may the Lord our God show us his approval and make our efforts successful. Listen, I've read through the Psalms many, many times, but I've never seen Psalm 90 verse 17. He's teaching me something. May the Lord our God show us his approval and make our efforts successful. Does anybody want their efforts to be successful? No matter what you're doing. Well, he taught me that verse in that moment. But not only that, the Holy Spirit reminds us of what's good. He reminds us of what's true. He reminds us of the things we need to be reminded of. This week I was making lunchboxes. It was early in the morning. I was a bit grumpy about the fact that I was making lunchboxes yet again. And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit reminded me in that moment, you have food to feed your children. I needed that reminder. What sort of mucho am I that I'm complaining about feeding my children? What, I, I mean, I'm a mal. But it's the Holy Spirit that reminds us. Are you with me? Teacher and reminder. Number two, the Holy Spirit is a lawyer. He is an advocate. He is senior counsel. Okay, let me unpack this for you. John 16, verse seven to eight. Jesus uh, is talking and he says, nevertheless, I'll tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. How crazy is it that Jesus says it's better that he goes away? For if I do not go, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I'll send him to you. And he, when he comes, he'll convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. That word helper, if you're taking notes, write helper and the Greek word parakletos, P-A-R-A, para, and then kletos, K-L-E-T-O-S, parakletos. It means helper, it means advocate, it means lawyer. What's the lawyer's job? Think about a trial. Think of Oscar Pistorius uh, in the courtroom and he's got his lawyer there. The lawyer's job is to not only guide uh, the, the person, give them wise guidance and wise counsel, it's to guide the defendant, but it's also to make the case before the judge to say, hey, this person's innocent. Guess what? The Holy Spirit makes your case. He pleads your case before the Father in heaven as we speak. Not only that, he is your wise guide, he is your counsel in this life, showing you what's true, showing you what's right, showing you what you should do and where you should go and how you should live. Showing you how the case should be argued. Are you with me? We had it just this week with one of our kids. Um, counsel and convictor all in one. <laughs> Does that make sense? We had to sit our, our one child down and say, that is not the way to respond to that situation, C convictor, right? What, how you responded was not good, was not wise. We are convicting them. You, you, you're not doing well here. And to say, this is how you should in future. Sure. Counsel, guidance, are you with me? That's what the Holy Spirit does to us. Number three, the Holy Spirit is a permanent resident. A permanent resident. What do I mean? He lives in believers' lives. He lives in our lives, friends. And he fills our lives. He lives in our lives and he fills. Let me, let me give you two texts. Number one, 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? How would you think about your body differently if you genuinely grasped the fact that you are the Spirit of God's temple? 
Like, he, like how would you eat differently? How would you, how would you drink differently? How would you smoke differently? <laughs> Some of you are wondering, like, should I give the ciggies and go on to the marijuana? medicinal, all of that stuff? No. Just how would you treat your body? You know? So he lives in us, okay? Like, he's, he resides in our internal world, okay? But not only that, he fills us. Ephesians 5.18, Paul writes and he says, don't get drunk with wine because that'll ruin your life, okay? Quick side note. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, Paul is contrasting things that we normally fill ourselves with. And he's saying, don't fill yourself with that. Fill yourself with the Holy Spirit. So in other words, if you're drinking alcohol to get joy and peace, don't do that because it's not gonna give you lasting joy and peace. Fill yourselves with Him. He'll give you lasting joy and peace. If you're, if you're addicted to online gaming for joy and peace, Paul would have written, don't, don't spend 20 hours a day gaming because it's not going to give you joy and peace. Yeah. Fill yourselves, be present continuous with the Holy Spirit because His presence is joy and peace. In other words, He's saying there's one place and one place only to find internal joy and peace. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit. If you're addicted to porn, that's not going to give you joy and peace. Yeah. Paul could have just said, if today's day and age, he would have said, don't watch more porn because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with, I could go on and on, are you with me? The fundamental meaning of being filled with the Spirit is being filled with the joy that comes from God. Number four, the Holy Spirit is a power bank. Ever, ever been stuck without a charger for your cell phone and, you, and you've got nothing to charge your phone with? Ever been there? A couple of weeks ago, I went on a trip, I realized I'd left my charger at home. Listen, the first thing I did when I landed is I, I, I had whatever battery power remaining, that battery power went to Google Maps, and I put in there, show me where the nearest dodgy electronics shop is. <laughs> I just need a Fong Kong charger right now, that's what I need. <laughs> and I'm not prepared to pay Apple prices, I need Fong Kong prices in this moment. <laughs> I need Boxburg flea market prices, are you with me? Anybody ever been there? Yes. Holy Spirit is our power bank. Gives us power in three areas. Number one, wisdom. Number two, revelation. Number three, actual power. So let me read it to you. Ephesians chapter one, 17 to 20. This is one of the most amazing texts you could ever read. Ephesians one. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Anybody want to know God better? Guess what? It's through the Holy Spirit's revelation and wisdom. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he's called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for those of us who believe. You'll see from the underlying sections of the text, wisdom, revelation, and power. Google Maps is talking and says, <laughs> turn left. You're at church. Now put it on airplane mode. Okay. <laughs> Wisdom, revelation, power. Did you know that you don't have to do life with your own wisdom, with your own knowledge, with your own experience? Friends, we, we have a power bank in heaven who is ready to deposit power into our minds and into our hearts Wisdom and revelation. Hein was leading us in the prayer time earlier. You know what I was praying for? I was, God, I've no, I haven't prayed this prayer in ages. God, give me incredible wisdom and insight into things, please. I need that. For your business, for your parenting, for your marriage, for your colleagues, for your, for your life group. When was the last time you prayed for wisdom and knowledge and power? Power to, power to stand when everybody else is falling. I read an inspiring story the other day about two men called Ridley and Latimer. Hugh Latimer and um, Nicholas Ridley were martyred for their faith in the 1500s in England. In fact, you can still go to the square in Oxford in England where they were burned at the stake. And as they were about to be burned, the wood was piled up, the, the flames were ready. I mean, the guys were ready to light it. 
and Ridley, uh, Latimer turns to Ridley. I mean, there they are. They're seconds away from flames engulfing them. And he says these words to him. He says, play the man, Master Ridley. We shall this day light such a candle by God's grace in England as I trust will never be put out. He's about to be martyred and he says to him, listen, take courage. Be a man, stand up. Today, when they light us up, we are lighting up something that can never, ever, ever be put out. That takes power. How many of you know that that's not possible without the Spirit of God in you? What are you, what are you working through at the moment? What are you going through at the moment? What are you facing at the moment? Can I encourage you that there is a power, a supernatural power? And I don't mean that in a weird sense. Uh, uh, you, know, you mentioned the word supernatural and people get all freaked out. It just means it's super, which means above the natural. There's something above the natural resource base that you and I have access to. It's the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, give me the strength, the power, the fortitude, the courage, the grace to walk through this with, and give me wisdom and give me a revelation so that I may know what I'm doing in this moment. Are you with me? Hey? Holy Spirit is a power bank. Number five, the Holy Spirit is a guide. Years ago, Pastor Ken and I went to Egypt and we had two contrasting experiences in Egypt. The first was in the Natural History Museum in Cairo. Uh, we're looking at these priceless artifacts. I mean, we're looking at mummies that are thousands of years old. And I remember being so disappointed because the, the description on the, on the, on the glass kind of case of it was still written in French in old typewriter font. Like, you could tell a typewriter had literally done this. Anybody remember a typewriter? Has anybody ever touched a typewriter? Like, a couple of you toppies all around you. Love it. <laughs> Anyway, so typewritten, okay? And I'm thinking to myself, when are you gonna update this? This is bit, uh, written in French in the 1930s. It's now, you know, 2000 and something. And we had no tour guide, so I had no idea what I was looking at. I had no guide, written or verbal. Contrast that to uh, a couple of days later, we were traveling between Luxor and Aswan, which are two ancient towns along the Nile. And we were looking at these temples and these artifacts and these uh, like mummies, unearthed and discovered and, and we had a tour guide, an Egyptian tour guide. And the difference between the history museum and, and these moments with, with him made all the difference. Why? Because I had a guide to tell me what I was looking at. We have a guide in life. The Spirit of God who has all the wisdom of God and the wisdom of heaven ready to guide you. All it takes is, Holy Spirit, would you guide me? How does he guide you? He guides you through his peace. When you pray about something and you feel a peace about something, that's how you know when to move. If you pray about something and you feel not so lacquer, you know, hold on, pause, not okay. John 16, when the, he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will not leave you alone unless you consistently ignore him. He will not leave your conscience alone whenever you and I have done something that's not what it should be. So he guides you into truth. Or all of a sudden you know there's something in a friendship. There's something in a colleague. Something's not quite right. You can say, what's up with you? Something's not quite right. He's guiding you into truth. Uh, all of a sudden, you know if somebody's lying to you, he guides you into truth. Um, yeah, he tells you when your words are true and he convicts you when they're not. He's like, hey, skabanga. <laughs> Stretching the truth. White lie, black lie, red lie, yellow lie, whatever lie you want to call it. Huh? He'll guide you as to whether a course of action is true to you and who you are. Does this fit with me? Are you with me? Holy Spirit is a guide. All, it, all we've got to ask is, would you, would you guide? Would you lead? Number six, the Holy Spirit is a gift giver. What's the best gift you've ever received? Try and, try and locate it and think through it with me for a moment if you wouldn't mind. What's the best gift you've ever received? So I'm gonna ask a couple of questions. If you're, a, if you're like a, a romance kind of vibes, like and best gift you've ever received is romance related, raise your hand quickly. Okay, thank you, Georgie. Um, <laughs> if you're a sentimentalist and your gifts are sentimental in nature, raise your hand. 
If your gifts are food related and it's a gift of food, raise your hand. Okay, if you're a fragrance guy or girl, and it's always a fragrance, oh, there we go. We've got people legit standing on their seats. If your gifts are clothes related, like, and if you're like a shoe person, you know what's worrying is there's a lot of, a lot of you ladies that are hooing your hands for everything. One of the nicest gifts that got given to me recently was from our staff. They were so kind. When Pastor Donovan could see a pastor away earlier this year, they took a, a poem that I'd found called When Great Trees Fall. And they framed it for me and they put it in a frame. And then they took a, a photo of us having dinner together and they put that in a frame and they presented that to us. It was so thoughtful. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is a gift giver and the only gift that he gives you and me is thoughtful gifts? Those gifts are located in three passages of Scripture predominantly. Um, for the purposes of this message, I want to highlight two of them, 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12. 1 Corinthians 12 gives a list of the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to His people. There they are, wisdom. So did you know you can ask for a gift of wisdom, knowledge, knowing what to do, <laughs> faith. Some of you trust in God for big things. You can ask the Spirit of God for the spiritual gift of faith. Hey? Healing, miracles, discerning of spirits. You can know when something's lacquer or something's not. And you, it's more than that. They've just come from Germiston. It's more than that. It's there's something. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues. Those are spiritual gifts. Speaking in tongues gives you a direct access to God. You can literally speak to, you bypass your head and you speak with your spirit to God. Some people can interpret tongues. They can say what that's for, for the purposes of the body. Romans 12, prophecy, serving. Look at all the folks here with how can I serve you shirts on. They've got the spiritual gift of serving. Some people have the spiritual gift of sitting. Just saying. Uh, teaching. Some people are teachers, born teachers, encouragement. Some people, hey, have you got people in your life, you know them, they're just encouragers, they're born encouragers. They, they have the spiritual gift of encouragement. That's not them just being upbeat, they've actually got a gift on their life to encourage. Those people are lovely people. Giving, some people are born with the spiritual gift of giving. They give their time, they give their talents. Some people are born to give financially. They've just got big faith to be able to give financially. Uh, leadership, mercy, these are all gifts. But here's the thing, here's the, whatever the gift is, it's always given, never for you and me simply alone. It's always given for the gift of the body. Your gifts are for the gifts of the body. That's why one of the most selfish things we can do as human beings is acknowledge that you and I, we have gifts and then not deploy them for the body. And you know what God does is uh, I believe those gifts shrink in our lives. I believe they wither. Uh, I believe they, they cut like, a, like a plant. If, if you're a plant in our house, you know you're gonna die. <laughs> you know what happens to your spiritual gift if you don't use it? It becomes like a plant in the chicken household. It just dies. <laughs> Fricks. Did you know this bank? Yeah, you, you dodgy people, all of you that I'm looking at right now. You have spiritual gifts. Can you believe it? I mean, look around. Can you imagine that the person you're sitting next to has a spiritual gift? Amazing. This bank, I'm, you're testing my theology. You too have spiritual gifts, even though you've got Brachpanites in you. <laughs> spiritual gifts even here. A couple of Bononians in here too. I know you, I see you. Mwah. Spiritual gifts even for you. And even this bunch of mob of... Mm, mob of mm, muchus over here. Even you. I mean, just look at the person next to you. Isn't it, isn't it amazing? They have a spiritual gift. Isn't God gracious? Hey, I mean, just look at, look at you lot. <laughs> isn't it amazing, hey? See, on a serious note, I mean, I'm having fun with you, but isn't it amazing that we've all got a spiritual gift? Don't sit on yours. Number seven, are you all okay? Yes. Getting something? Yes. Hanging in there? Yep. Thinking about lunch yet? Yes. Now you are. Okay. <laughs> Number seven, the Holy Spirit is a certificate of ownership. 
Anybody who's known anybody who uh, is in a motorcycle club, like let's take the Holy, Holy Davidson Club, the minute they enter that club, what do they do? They get a badge. And then what they do is they wear that badge on their jacket on the back. And then the, every time they're driving like this, everybody knows they belong to the Holy Club. Right? The whole point is to let everybody know I belong to the Holy Club. That's the whole point of it. Guess what? The Holy Spirit, the Scripture tells us, is that when, when we, the moment we, be, we place our faith in Jesus, the moment we become children of God, we have a badge put on us that says Jesus, Christ follower. And we get mocked. Um, the text, let me read it for you, Ephesians 1.13, it says, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. What does that mean? The Holy Spirit is like a seal. You remember letters when you would, in the old days, you would seal a letter with, with wax. That's what Paul's getting at here. It's like he, he has put his stamp of ownership on you. You have a different certificate of ownership on you now. Move from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Not only is he a seal, he is a deposit of things to come in your life in eternity. And so the Holy Spirit pours himself out into our lives and we experience just a little bit. It's like a starter. It's like one of those really small starters at a really expensive French restaurant. You know, when you, you look at it and you go, is that all? <laughs> hey, like, are you for real? For that price, is that the starter? <laughs> I'll never forget going to a Jamie Oliver restaurant years ago. Like, is that the, is that the steak? <laughs> I thought that was the, the, the meatball to start. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's like that. He's a little deposit of, of everything you're going to experience in heaven one day. Sure. He's a deposit of the life to come. So he seals you and he deposits himself in you and he says, now you will live in some way like you'll live in eternity. And the more you let me in, the more you'll live like that. Number eight, the Holy Spirit is an intercessor. An intercessor, what does that word mean? An intercessor is one who intervenes on behalf of another, especially in prayer. Romans eight. 26 to 27. In the same way, the Spirit of God helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. How crazy to think that there is a God in spirit form who spends His whole existence in heaven, praying for you and me right now. In fact, he's praying for you in this moment. He's praying for each one of us. Please help them not to be distracted on their phone. Uh, please, please give them the courage for that meeting that they have tomorrow. Please help them to be able to leave behind some of the baggage from this week that's just been passed. Please give them the faith to step into what God's calling them to do. He's praying for you. How? Guys, it's a mind, listen, I don't know if you're as mind blown as I am about this thought, but that the Holy Spirit would be praying 24 seven. I mean, it's like one of those TBN prayer lines. You know those things, pay a hundred bucks and we'll pray for you. No, well these prayers are free. <laughs> Aren't you glad? The Holy Spirit's not a con artist, not a spiritual entrepreneur. He prays for you and for me all the time, only ever prays for you and me. When was the last time you prayed and interceded for somebody else, just like you have a Spirit of God praying for you? You and I, we can pray for friends, for family. When was the last time you extended an invitation and said, hey, come to our community, come and experience what it's like? When was the last time you interceded for somebody as you have someone interceding for you? Sure. Number nine, the Holy Spirit is a life giver. He's a life giver, meaning that the Holy Spirit works in the lives of you and I to renew, to sanctify, and to make us holy. 
He gives us a new life here on earth, and He gives us life into eternity. So let me unpack these two dimensions for you. Romans chapter 8. Listen, if there's one chapter you want to spend some time in this week, Romans chapter 8. It's just what, it's one of the pivotal passages of Scripture in, in all of Scripture. Romans chapter 8, he says, if, if Christ is in you, then even you, though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness, okay? Because you're in right standing with God, because you're covered by the work and the grace of Jesus, okay? And if the Spirit, here's the, check the underlined part, if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead, if that Spirit, isn't it crazy that you've got the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead, He lives in you, will He not also bring your body to life one day? What Paul is doing is casting his mind forward to each, the moment where each one of us will, will die, but where our bodies will be resurrected, made new, and 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 into catapulted into eternity with God. That same spirit that did that to Jesus will do it to you. But in the meantime, he also brings you life here on earth. What do I mean? He sanctifies. Uh, he makes new. He renews. To sanctify is to make holy. It is to, it is to, it is, it is to birth the life of Christ in us in increasing measure each and every day. He's the one who makes us more like Jesus. Uh, he's the one. Think back to yourself five years ago and then think of yourself now. I'm pretty sure that most of us would be better versions of who we were five years ago. Older, maybe grayer, maybe some of us a little bit dicker, but still better. We don't, we don't react the way we used to with the taxi driver. Maybe our racism is, 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 is different to what it used to be. Maybe, maybe we're less racist than what we used to be. We need to talk about this stuff in our country. You know? Maybe we've got softer hearts and thicker skins. Maybe our anger levels have just dissipated and, and are reduced. Maybe our wisdom is increased. Maybe our courage is much greater than it ever used to be. Who is that? That's the Spirit of God sanctifying, making more like Jesus, you and me. That's what I mean by he brings you life. He brings you a taste of the life that you're gonna live one day in heaven. The person that you're gonna be in heaven one day, he gives you a taste of that now. He goes, look, this is who you can become. You can become like Jesus even now and every day, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. How does it happen? We be with him, become like him, and do what he did. You all still okay? Number 10, the Holy Spirit is a fruit tree. The fruit tree. Let's go to Galatians chapter five and down to verse 19, team at the back. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Paul doesn't hold back, eh? It's basically describing a nightclub on the East Rand. <laughs> Guys, let me tell you, as I have before, anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so make of that what you will. Then verse 22, but. Aren't you glad for the buts in Scripture? But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of life in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Now if you're here with your spouse, don't look to the left or the right, just look straight ahead. And picture with me how much nicer your life would be if your spouse had more love, joy. Again, don't look. You can't. Peace, patience, kindness. Pastor Ken's on sabbatical. I'm in the clear here. Patience, <laughs> kindness. <laughs> Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Can you imagine your life? How much better your life would be? Now, here's the thing. Here's the clangor. That person next to you has just been praying the same thing about you. thinking how much better their life would be if you had more love, joy, peace, patience. You can't muster up more patience 
or more joy. You cannot manufacture it. You can't muster it up. You can't, here's the thing, you can't even pray for it. Pointless prayer. God, give me more patience. What a lame prayer. Why? Because the scripture's already told us the route to patience. In fact, the route to love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. What's the route? The route is the spirit of God being allowed to live in your life. In other words, you can't pray for it, nor can you muster it up or manufacture it. You can only be the recipient of the Spirit of God's work in your life to that end. Are you with me? So don't pray for patience. Pray for the Spirit of God to fill you, like Ephesians 5.18, and then you will have more patience as you give Him greater access to your life. Are you all with me? Are you all okay? One final word, and that is that you and I can stifle or quench or smother the Holy Spirit. Ephesians uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.19, it says, don't quench, don't stifle, don't, 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 put a, don't be a wet blanket over the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? We ignore his promptings. He tells us, don't cheat on your taxes, but you still do. He tells you, be kind to that person, give to that person. He, he prompts you to serve, he prompts you to be in a life group, he prompts you to lead something, he prompts you to treat people in a different way. He prompts you to get help for that ongoing addiction. But we do this, we go. And then he prompts us again the next day. And now it's a little bit easier just to turn quickly. And then the next day, because God's mercy is on you every morning, he tries again, but this time we quick turn away very quickly. That's quenching the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Don't quench. When he speaks, listen. When he prompts, say yes. When he challenges, go okay. When he disciplines, go. Amen. Let me just share with you the, the story that I was reading the other day when I was preparing for this about Chinese emperor called Quin. He led China's very first empire and uh, lived in the years 200 or died in the year 200 BC. So we're talking a long time ago. Um, the thing that was remarkable about this guy, his life was many things, but one of the most remarkable things was his tomb. Um, they had 8,000, 8,000 terracotta soldiers made for his tomb to guard him into the afterlife. I'll show you a picture of it, it'll be on the screen. 8,000 of these little dudes made so when they discovered his tomb they discovered this lot with him how many of you that's like a that's a thing to go through some of us are like just give me the tombstone I'll be good you know put on you know what I'll put on my tombstone he tried (laughs) have you ever thought about what you want on your tombstone (laughs) I think I think that's a good one he tried nothing wrong with that Anyway, back to, you distracting me, back to this dude's things. So when they discovered his tomb, they unearthed his tomb and they began to uncover and unpack and unpack and unpack and unpack. And this is what they found. What's the point of the story? There's a whole, there was a whole world that existed right beneath the surface and they had no idea. There's a whole world in our faith that exists. And you and I can live having no idea. That's why I believe this series is going to be so incredible. I really want to encourage you to settle in and, and, and absorb every moment of it. There's a whole second story to our faith where it's not just belief but experience. And unless we unpack it, unearth it, dig for it, mine for it, excavate for it, look for it, we won't find it. So as a community, let's, let's do that these next four weeks. Let's make it an incredible time. Is that okay? Yeah.